with a mission to impact the lives of children across Africa's continent. Two friends, internationally acclaimed hip-hop artist Emmanuel Jow and award-winning entrepreneur Paul Linney founded a social enterprise. The key is E. Its aim, to invest in social entrepreneurs in Africa whose businesses positively impact the lives of children. Our first stop, Kenya. I'm in Kenya, I'm gonna be with Paul Lindley, so we'll be traveling around looking for entrepreneurs that we can invest in. We're finding entrepreneurs whose businesses socially benefit children so that we can help them grow their businesses and therefore grow their impact with children. If we find things that have got huge social impact for kids but don't really have a business model, I, I won't invest because they're effectively charities. Paul Lindley grew up living in Zambia. His first company, Ellis Kitchen, went from a startup to generating sales of over $100 million in less than nine years and is now the biggest baby food brand in the UK. I've invested in other people and that's a form of impact investment, investing not expecting any return and I've done that all my life. Emmanuel Jao fought as a child soldier in South Sudan until he was rescued by an aid worker. He has now become an international hip-hop star and activist for human rights. In words and lyrics, he tells the story of his amazing life. We've both grown up in Africa and we had these vastly different childhoods, but we found that through those different childhoods we'd actually looked at the world in exactly the same way. He has more experience when it comes to business choices, but I kind of like still uh, struggling a bit in trying to making the choices. I kind of like move with the passion and what I see there, yeah. I think Emmanuel is going to want to help everybody and I think we've got to get some focus. This is about finding entrepreneurship that can change the world. So it's really important that they have a business model and that's sustainable. It may come over as the right thing or the wrong thing on film, I don't know. After a rigorous application process, five social entrepreneurs have been shortlisted. They now have the opportunity to secure an investment of up to £20,000. Before the entrepreneurs present their business pitches, it's important that Paul and Emmanuel see the social impact these businesses are having up close. I'm Paul Payne, General Manager at the Key Z, and this is Cecilia, the first entrepreneur pitching. Whilst in Kenya, I'll be making sure everything runs as smooth as possible. So how do you feel about pitching? Have you done a pitch before? No, no? I've not done that before. I have mixed reaction, but most of it excitement, because okay. it's a learning process, it's a stage in life, so I would, I would want to take the challenge. Okay, so if you need any help, yes. then I can help you before and then I can communicate with you. Yes. And on the day, I can spend some time with you before, I, before you yes. go inside and you pitch. Yes. Okay, my name's are Cecilia Aching Ayot. I'm the director of St. Martin's School and Daycare Centre, and also the coordinator of St. Martin's Catering Group. How many teachers have you got here? 12 teachers. And how many cl different classes, 12 classes? No, we have like the baby class, nursery and pre unit those are three classes. And then we have grade one to six. Those are nine. Okay. And then we have extra teachers who take specific subjects. Is this human waste in but, here? Yeah, but now, it, now it's far much better because it has rained, so this is clean. Wow. Is this? Is this? Is this? Is this? Is this? Is this? I was a very bright student and a, a bright member of my family. 
But when I gave birth, everything turned and my father became so violent. My brothers looked at me as a bad girl, as a prostitute. I ended up in a very abusive marriage and it was very difficult for me. So I just didn't want to see any young girls from Kibera go through the same or any small kids come from the same families. I'm so passionate about the school program and mainly because of my life experience. It's time to pitch. Cecilia and Lucy are here to present the finer detail of their business model. So we are running a school and my main business is I offer catering services together with my team members. These are some of our teachers. We've hired them, but it's more of a voluntary because whatever we are giving them, I will not be ashamed to say. We are giving them between 6,000 to 7,000 wow. a month. So it's not really enough to sustain them. But we hope with time we'll improve and we'll be able to give them what can keep them. St. Martin's Catering Group is a small catering business that provides services to events and corporate functions. 40% of its profit goes towards running this school. Averagely, we are looking at around 3.7 million Kenya shillings that we hope to invest in mainly equipment, which takes a, a huge amount of the money. The other thing that we need to invest in is marketing and advertisement, which is very key in our catering industry. The only sunshine, you make me happy, dear visitors. The next day, we were in the heart of the Kibera slum to attend the St. Martin School graduation. We had such an amazing experience. It was exciting to see that Cecilia's small catering business could have such a lasting impact in the lives of these children. We could averagely get like three uh, moderate events that would give like 150 each per month. If you did eight or nine events like that one, you could repay the loan with the profit that you'd made from that mm -hmm. over two years. Sometimes I can't tell where I got the strength because I didn't have any role model. The only few interactions I had was either watch news or read an article of some woman very far from Africa doing very well. For me, success is the ability to impact on somebody's life positively. I'm really impressed again by Cecilia. Although it took a little time to understand what, what the money brought, <laughs> how much it was and how much... that They have got the... I, I believe there is the capacity there to do these more events. I mean, I'm quite shocked about the, the profit. 420,000. Do you know how big is that for? Big, right? Education was the key that saved Emmanuel from leading a destructive and turbulent life. He now passionately fights to advocate for children to have this same privilege. You know, uh, peace was robbed from my childhood. I was born in the time when my country was at war, so there was a lot of conflicts. By the age of seven, my father gave me out and I became a, a child soldier when I was eight. We were forced into eating things we don't eat in our culture, like vultures, snails, snakes, frogs, anything we could find there. And when everything was running out, I was actually tempted to eat my comrades. A friend of mine died, and I was tempted to eat him. Some soldiers started eating dead bodies. I was rescued by a British aid worker called Emma McCune when I was like 11 turning 12. And she smuggled me to Kenya and put me in school. To be smuggled into Kenya and put in school and get to experience a new life. It put me in a situation to say, look, I am lucky that I'm here.
I mean, people in Africa are so entrepreneurial, partially because they have to be. Mm -hmm. There aren't formal jobs here, um, which has led to people setting up businesses all over the place. The street's full of them. And the question is, can they think beyond trading and just making a living to creating wealth and creating change from that wealth? It's difficult for individuals to actually acquire wealth. If you earn $10,000, probably $1,000 is, is going to be what come, come to you. And the rest, you have extended family. All of those people are part of you. When you're successful, they have to have a cut. Before meeting our next entrepreneur, we stopped by for some lunch at a local store. Have you ever eaten chapati? Yes, yeah. I have. <laughs> you think I haven't lived? I'm an African boy. I've eaten all this stuff. Yeah, you go, Thank man. you. He's trying to be hardcore. He's eating chapati. <laughs> Good. How long have you been here? This is about the, the fourth year now. Okay. And every year does it grow? Yeah, it's grow. Yeah, because we started with this small one. You see this one now? Yeah, yeah. Have come. This one, now we are here. Who is the uh, person who sets the prices and does the money? You know, in Kenya, you should set your prices. Depending on the yeah, customer. On, uh, depending on the customer. That's what it is. My cup of tea is three times much his cup of tea. Yeah, that's what we normally do. You know, when you, when you, get, know. Money, when you get money <laughs> to get a decent job, there is no, no jobs. Space. No, no jobs. Job. Yeah. So you should so wake up and you make your own job. Make your own job. We love money. No, mm. these are. <laughs> 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 he loves money more than you. But he loves money. money. No. If you have he money, use it for you have a good life. Yeah. See, he does business with a purpose. Yeah. If my business make profit, mm -hmm. another child is going to school. Yeah. Another child is going to hospital. Mm -hmm. That's the business. So I think most of these guys along the street. I've set up these businesses because they have to earn something. Through circumstance, I haven't had the opportunity to think, what's going to happen in five years' time? And I've got a really good shop here. Why not have three shops? Why not have 10, 50, 100 shops? The collision of things that allow that to happen have been prevented in the past, I think. You know, there's been um, a lack of, of, of technology, a lack of communication, a lack of consumers. All of those things are changing. And I'm really interested to understand whether people's mindsets can change at the same pace. The next social business was located in Dandora, one of the roughest areas in Kenya. For our safety, we had to have some of the local influencers escort us to the heart of the ghetto. Hello everybody, I go by the name of Giuliani, a hip-hop artist in Kenya. I run a company called Dandora Hip-Hop City. When we were young, man, these were my streets, you know. There was two options, you either become a thief or you become a thief. Dandora Hip Hop City is a concept that Giuliani is trying to develop. It will provide space for young aspiring hip hop artists to develop and monetize their musical talent. It's music, arts, and business. Right now is the only alternative when it comes to youth employment and reducing crime. In neighborhoods. No other way. So when you think of yourself, do you think of yourself as a musician, or as an entrepreneur, or a social activist? I can say I'm an I'm entrepreneur by default, because once things are not working for you, you have to find a better way for them to work. So you become automatically an entrepreneur, and that's Kenya. Are you comfortable with pitching on Friday? Do you know what you're going to pitch about? Do you know how to pitch? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm working my English down. I'm trying to sort out my English, right? So, uh, of course, I'm, I'm used to, it's about being genuine and trying to, it doesn't mean I know everything, but at least I'll, t I'll tell you what I know right now. As we were led down to the hip-hop city, there was nothing like a good old game of football on the way. This is like a big economy, like a lot of money is being made from this dump. Uh, dump. Like recycling? Recycling, and, but now the government is trying to introduce new ways of doing it, but there's a little bit of resistance. Eventually the government will, take, will get rid of it, but 
But this is a, like a government place. This is where yeah. the government comes and dumps stuff. Yeah. The whole Nairobi. Yeah. The whole Nairobi dumps the stuff. It's really huge. This used to be a playing ground and everything changed. Maybe half the people here are like children. Yeah. Are they going to school? Most of them go to school like these ones. These, uh -huh. are, these are supported school. It is they are all over Kenya. Yeah. It's called Bridge. So it's not a government school, it's a ah, no, charity no. school or a... Uh, charity school. Sure. They, they don't go to school because of this dancing, dumping, dumping site. site. Instead of going to school, they, they, are, they, are, they are waking up early in the morning, they are going they are to, to, to search. You make the money here or you, you do that organic crime. Yeah. yeah. We are like the lucky ones who never did it. Like if, if I show you the people that I grew up with... Yeah. It's, it's a little bit sad. It's a little bit sad. So you own this building? Yeah. And you're renting out rooms? We did, but now of course since we are changing things. At this floor, we put um, now when you can put the classes. For the, it's called School of Rhyme, where we teach musicians to a three month uh, curriculum on how to be brand and delivery and writing music and whatever. And then after what they come out with is a, is a mixtape, and then we can take them on a tour. Uh, they have this clique called Mau Mau Camp where I, I joined later. And it's a small community of just rappers and freestyling any day. It was a community, a place where you belong, a place where you can be built as a musician. Catalyze my process more. So I like to do that for artists professionally now, not just to be just a place to hang out. You employ teachers. We employ teachers. So who, who? Where's the money? Where's your money coming from? The money comes from the students because we don't do it for free. Uh -huh. We have to do it subsidised. Uh -huh. Have you got a projection for that first year of how much money you could make, how much costs it would be? We are, we are intending that every student will pay thirty thousand to be in the first curriculum. What are the costs going to be? To, to run, run the... The costs are based on... Um, you have two things. The, the first one is... Um, is um, just to maintain the team that is working. The, 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 the teachers. Even though Giuliani had a really inspiring vision, he struggled with being able to provide a convincing business case. In this space we'll put a community radio because it's up, up, uh, upstairs and... Uh, a little bit valuable pro uh, staff will be here. I don't want to. I don't want to lie to you that uh, that um, that uh, I mean, you know what community radio, the exact numbers, and or, or the incubation. You know why? That's why I'm saying that we need to first set up a team. Once I set up a team, I'll be confident enough to know. I'm not good at community radio. I'm good at content, but I'm not good at the business when it comes to radio. This guy uh, has got a vision, and sometimes when you have a vision, it's hard to sell your vision. Sometimes. I just like the project. I think right. I don't know what do you think you get your money back two years later? Uh, two years later, I think I can, but I've never invested in getting my money back. He's creatively fantastic. He's socially um, inspirational. Yeah, he gave a really, really bad pitch and <laughs> answer the questions I thought. Cause he didn't. He didn't know numbers. He didn't ask for anything. He had no idea of what numbers, turnover, profit, any of those things. You can't go and ask somebody for money. You can't. Uh, on a commercial basis and not have any of those things. The heart of this program is not about finding a social cause and just supporting it. It's about finding a social cause that a business is trying to solve and they can do so sustainably. Or any person that I find trying to use their skills or their business to try to create change, I want to do it, I want to support them. I am different with Paul. Paul think and like things ahead of it. But me, I'm more like, okay, your idea is cool. I like you, and then here, go on with it. To be honest, guys, I'm not prepared for what I'm looking for, because I go with the flow. I kind of have an idea, but I'll know by the time it's ending. I'm looking for that business acumen today. I know what he's looking for, so. <laughs> I get if the, he like don't all, get all it the social <laughs> side of it. He'll want to give his money to everybody and like just spread, spread the love. Yeah, you know, it's called impact investment. Do it with your eyes closed. We've been given a challenge by these young kids. It's a race. 
if they beat us, we buy them lunch. Do you think you'll win? I'm yeah. an old man in this. So be embarrassing. Uh, no, no, no. If I win, it'd be embarrassing. Can, man. Never give up, man. Never give up. <laughs> We are putting our hope on him. He came number two. I became number three. My challenge was to beat Paul. So I'm successful. After my embarrassing defeat, I was luckily able to find a local seamstress to sew my trousers back up. We're gonna show you the winner, come and see. <laughs> this guy was wearing gum boots and he beat us. Making those ways to make a ways without buying into the hype. Let's do this right. We are winning. If you want Paul Lindley to fund you, this is the secret. The secret is just say, I want children to smile. That is it. I want the children to be happy. I want children to eat nutritional foods. I want children to have an education. There, you don't need to struggle because Paul has a heart for children. He's going to cry and you get your check. Simple as that. When you pitch, make sure that. <laughs> <laughs> The next entrepreneur was based in Kileleshwa, right next door to the church Emmanuel attended growing up. Hi, my name is Carol Kimari. I'm the founder of Grab a Book, where we are bringing back the reading culture through our children by introducing reading at an early age. You can see we have different sections. We have the artwork. This one was done by our three-year-olds. Three-year-olds? Yeah. This wow. one was done by uh, five-year-olds. So in all, everything is done by different level of children. Mm -hmm. And they write, they... They do the summaries. Kids yes. have got better handwriting. I we, know. We, I make, know. we make them do summaries as well. When I was growing up, I was in an introvert and uh, I loved reading because reading has always been a place for me to run away to, a place to hide and a place for adventure. Grab a Book is a pop-up library that helps children enhance their reading and literacy skills. They have a smart business model, which allows children from all classes and backgrounds to have access to their service. So you've got 200 kids coming. How many of those are fee-paying kids? A hundred of those paying fee at different intervals, and the, our fees are uh, annual fees. Annual fees of yes. roughly, how, well, exactly how much? Uh, each child pays 2,000 now. I'm passionate about reading and uh, getting kids to read at an early age. We've seen improvement of up to 25% in grade and uh, that, is, that gives us uh, the motivation to know that we are making a difference. What I was expecting was you were to you know, talk about the education being about reading and about academic learning and mm -hmm. it's not really, it's about developing an individual and exactly. giving them the choices to find what they're passionate about and mm -hmm. start at a really young age mm -hmm. and that's so important in life forming at that young age. For now, we are looking for about 46,000 to set up a centre where the kids can be able to come in every time instead of just once a week. You've got $17,000 new money coming in year one. Year two, let's say, worst case scenario, it's the same number. So you've got $34,000 coming in. Yeah. And when we knock on your door and say, can we have our money back, please? You haven't earned $46,000. How have you going to have earned much more than $46,000 so that we can get our money back and you can have done very good stuff for children's education and children's um, you know, welfare. Um. So how, how do we get our, our money back and how do you grow your business? The costs or in terms of revenue are when we're experiencing a bad year. So that's the bottom or the, right. the rock bottom amount we can achieve in any, in any, um, in any financial year. So we can get twice that, three times that, depending on the number of children we're able to serve. I see, okay. Yes. For me, I see a lot of, uh, I, think, I think probably this one has been underestimated. I think this can be really, really, really profitable. After speaking to Carol, it was evident that because of her big heart, she wanted to see social change come about very quickly. But would it be too quickly? 
I think most of the social entrepreneurs, when they do it, they do it with passion. So it's take a while for them to blur, to develop the business. Business is the only thing that's going to sustain them. Yeah. So if the business isn't making sense, the social impact will just fall away. And I, to be honest, was a little bit disappointed in that, that those numbers, to me, didn't make any sense at all. They want to borrow money that they can't even pay back on their own projections. The, the most frustrating thing for anybody who want to make change is they want change to happen fast. And they kind of like get caught up in trying to make many things that they want to change. And then they end up getting stranded. And sometimes it can even uh, cut your throat because you may not move. And you end up promising so many things that you fail to deliver. Or you may become like a dreamer. For far too long the world has had the wrong perceptions of Africa. This narrative must change as Africa's future begins to shine brighter. The, the, the news that comes out of Africa is generally negative and that affects the confidence of the people here and it affects the perception of the rest of the world about here. Never in the news is the beauty of the landscapes or people that have done exceptional things. First open heart surgery was done in Africa. Egyptians were doing things that people in Europe weren't doing for thousands of years later. There's the poetry and the culture and the history and the folklore and the music and the art and all of these things that never make the headlines. Yet when you come here and you delve into what's around, you see this plethora of skills and added stuff that the world can take. In the next few years, as that's incorporated into businesses and Africa becomes more confident about itself, in itself, then I think the future is bright here. Our next entrepreneur is hoping to be that light that spreads a new message of Africa across the world. Robert? Oh, Karibu, welcome. Good to meet welcome you. Welcome to Youth TV. Hi, my name is Robert Kamanja. I'm the founder of Youth TV. Youth TV is a, a station focusing on youth, youth empowerment, youth development. Mm -hmm. It's a digital TV broadcasting across the whole country. We do news, entertainment, music, talent, naturally talent, innovation. We have yeah. uh, a lot of interns we are training who have come of college, out of college, and they come and uh, work with us for about three months. So there's like a 44 million Kenyans. In Kenya? 40 million. 40 million, and how many people are under 20? 60% is okay. youth, so yeah, under 24. 35. Okay, wow. big market. Yeah. Huge yeah. market. We are targeting to have 1% market share in the, in the industry. Uh, as we move uh, towards the fifth year, we expect to uh, gain about 10% market share in the, in, in the industry. I want to introduce you to Frederick. Yeah, he's the one who makes sure the office is running, he also produces a program. We can do with uh, 20,000 pounds. And uh, this will be broken down into equipment. Uh, and then also uh, the, the, those programs you'd like to roll out. And a bit of money to go to advertising to create awareness across the whole country. Every Saturday we have a market, or we call it a talent market. We get the young people to come and visit us. And uh, we showcase their talent and we put it on TV. Good girl, well done. Let's go. Cool. Have you seen yourself on TV before? Yes. You've done this before? Yes. Okay, cool. Right now, we are operating on a loan. Okay. Uh, we've managed to get a loan, um, a two million Kenyan shilling loan, okay. uh, which we are paying at an interest rate of about 36%. Wow. It's very, very expensive. That's a very that big is, loan. Um, it's just out of that risk. Bank, you've got a loan from now, gets repaid first presumably, mm -hmm. and, and you've serviced that debt, have you? It's, it's, a, it's a loan on my personal account. Not on your TV's account? No, no, no. It's, it's me who services the loan. I spend a thousand dollars every month to service the loans. Okay. Yeah. But I have some rental incomes that are able yeah. to sustain that. From the companies? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Robert. Thank you very much. It was a bit love and tense. And, um, I think we may not have expressed fully ourselves 
we didn't uh, express. I think we could have done better than that. So we give a loan and they haven't got enough money to pay back two loans. Yet one of them is his personal loan. So he's not going to... We're, we're second. Youth TV is well known here. Yeah, everybody knows what Youth TV is. But not most people are not on that platform. Not everybody is on the digital. Analog still rule. That's why 50% is taken by citizens. If they're looking for money, they should be looking to maximise the opportunity when the digital signal comes along, rather than building studios and things. So I, I didn't get at all the connection between that. So how about we don't think about giving them money? What else could we yeah. give them? My first money that I ever made, I put all of it into the community when I first became a musician. So I kind of like lack that contents of saying no to the projects. So now we've got uh, CTC International, Zane and Jeremiah, biggest business. And that can be a good thing and a bad thing. So let's hear what that pitch is for what they want with our specific investment. Hey, Zane! <laughs> 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 need you too. How are you Welcome, doing? Buddy. My name is Zane Wildman, and I'm the executive director of CTC International. And I am Jeremiah Kuria. Uh, I'm the country director here in Kenya. So come cool. on in, we got eggs and bacon and pancakes. This is the Ubuntu team. This is called Hunter. Wow. Berlin. <laughs> CTC International works in communities and empowers residents to help themselves through business. The founders gave us a tour of their development to show us the work which is underway. We started with the special needs school in 2007, or 2006, and then the recession hit and we were like, oh my gosh, how are we going to sustain this? We're, mis we're losing a yeah. lot of our donors. We were like right on the brink of failure. And the mother's like, you can't close the school. We've had our kids have improved so much because most of these kids are such a stigma when you're born with a disability, which is a huge learning experience for us. Mm. We started doing house visits and a lot of these kids were locked up, mm. chained up, mm. roped up. And not because the mothers wanted to, they're mostly single mothers. And they would have to go out into the shamba, you know, mm. the garden to, to bring food in. They have, you know, four or five other kids. And so they would have to leave these kids at home. So they would have to chain them up or lock them up while they went out to bring food back home. Art is a form of a therapy. It engages you for the moment. Now they're in heaven. They get to see heaven now. <laughs> So really what we're looking for from, from the Kia Z is to be able to hire an entrepreneur. The key is entrepreneurship. We've had this entrepreneur, her name is Jess Ramey. With her being able to come on board, it would allow us to scale up, employ um, around 65 to 100 new full-time women, which the trickle-down effect on that is about how many children, the average five children per? Uh, mother. Per mother, yeah. Lifeline is one of CTC's fashion businesses. It employs the mothers of the children who have disabilities. The mothers sold fashion goods that are sold in major store chains in the US. We started with only nine moms. Uh, where are those nine moms that started? Uh, yes, so, stand up, the original yes. moms. Yes. Those are our nine first moms. So this year, those financial projections, you're looking for the Lifeline stuff to be over $1.5 million, something like that, is it? Correct. And that grows to what, two years later, after you've got this person on board? For just next year, we do 2.5 million um, in sales. Year two uh, would be roughly 2.8, and then year three would be a fairly large leap uh, to 3.3 million. Who's the fastest seamstress? <laughs> Who's the fastest? Inuam kono, inuam kono halaka moja. So Paul, what, something else you want to know about Jen, uh, Jen uh, has disability herself. Okay. Wow. Yeah. 
<laughs> she'll tell you that if it were not for the metal she ties on her hands, her legs would go all over. <laughs> she says that with, uh, with pride. And now that the fact that she is the one who is the fastest wow. is yeah. even a great joy. So <laughs> thank you, Jane. Keep it up. Keep it up. We quickly, we quickly had the opposite problem. We had empowered the mom so much, they started like demanding all these things. We're like, whoa, like, easy. <laughs> it's a great partnership, but one guy's American. And in part of my head, is this story about Africans or is it about Africa? Is it about the people who got the business or is it about the impact of the business on people? My parents were depending on uh, what would be brought to them. It's like uh, handouts that uh, would make a difference in their lives. And uh, I didn't like that idea. Giving uh, doesn't empower. Giving takes away all the power and leaves somebody uh, helpless and, and waiting. We're off to meet Monica, one of the first mothers that CTC International employed. We started at CTC. That was my first time to have uh, money in my in my heart. <laughs> Before she joined CTC, she had lots of struggles. More often than not, her house would be locked by the landlord because she was unable to pay. She has six kids, and uh, she is saying uh, having breakfast was uh, a big problem. Sometimes they would not even have dinner uh, to 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 eat. Well, she has made this to be her kitchen. She is preparing her food from here. Has breakfast, lunch, dinner. So mm -hmm. what's what's behind here? It's uh, a bed. Yeah, so that's a bed. Yeah, uh, that's a bed. That's how we all start. So when Zane met me, I was in the same spot. Like, uh, I'll be in one room with four kids. And yeah. So from nothing to this, uh, Monica, this, this is huge. And that's another bedroom, right? Uh, it's our bedroom, this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She is managing buying a piece of property. She's by managing building this home. She's managing paying school fees for the kids. Uh, she has been doing, able to do a whole lot. I mean, these guys are big, you know, they're, the, the way of doing their business, because I see it like, it's, it's affordable what they are asking for. They have the potential to make massive impact. You see? Because they can grow, I think he said, up to 100 new women in the first year from having this lady Jess on board. So there's 100 m more people that are going to have employment and that's probably 500 people that are going to have a family, you know, from the family to extension. Five. 500 people are going to get a benefit from having this one person employed mm -hmm. there. That's just within the employees. Mm -hmm. Then there's the children elsewhere. But I did worry when he first said, you know, we're going to bring an American in. And I'm thinking, when he said that, I'm thinking, okay, so any funding we can do, any help we can give, is going to go to an American person's bank account in America. After an inspiring week of visiting the entrepreneurs and an intense day of hearing them pitch, it's now time for us to reach a decision. Who should the key Z support? If I had the 20,000 pounds and I'm supposed to div uh, divide it, for security, I would go for Zane and Jeremiah. I would probably give them 10. Then I'll take 10,000 pounds and then I'll probably give five to Giuliani and then now go to give 5,000 to Cecilia. We took pictures from all of them and I, I, I really can't understand why, how within those pictures it's, it's influenced you to, to, to invest in him because he gave no reason at all. I think it's because probably I understand, I see exactly what money can come out of there, because I'm in the music industry. But he couldn't tell us what money could come out of it. He didn't give us any numbers. Probably he didn't know how to do it, but the reality is he has survived this far as the only hip-hop artist was a vision that is giving back. So I see myself in him. It's in my interest to try to help hip-hop grow in Kenya. From what we heard today, in all honesty, my reputation will be shot and I cannot uphold putting no. Kizzy money into Giuliani because he gave us no reason No, 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 at this all. is not he you. He guessed at numbers. He didn't give us any reason he's got a business in Hip Hop City today at all. This as a show is just showing who I am and the choices that I'm making inside here. 
But now here, I'm not allowed to make the choices. Yeah, that's not true. So if I'm going to be pulled to invest in what you want, that's not fair for me. So what I say, okay, I don't agree where you want to invest. Give me my part and let me invest. Giving him £5,000, I might as well give to a random person on the street because they will have told me as much about how he can create that business as he did today. For now, we may look at it like the keys is not doing a good investment. But you may be shocked that Hip Hop City become the home. Maybe. The it's entire not a risk thing I'm prepared to make Africa. at this point. And we split the money. There's another way of doing it. I won't put my name to it. You don't put your money no. on, on... Therefore, on. instead, we've got £15,000 and you take £5,000 out of the Key and you make a private investment in that. After an excruciating tussle of ideas and thoughts, Paul and Emmanuel were finally able to reach a mutual agreement. He's so impressed by mm. the scalability opportunities and the way you thought through the business. Mm. And, you know, from what we can afford, we think that we can, you know, get Jess a salary for six months. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully in that six months, she'll have proved and be already creating right. employment and creating new people. We offered CTC International an investment of £15,000. This will help hire a full-time staff for six months for their Lifeline fashion brand. I think you know, we've just been so impressed by you specifically, Cecilia, in terms of what we've seen all week. That not only the fact that you do so, short, so much social stuff for children make a massive difference to all of those lives, but actually you are a really good entrepreneur. You had answers to all the questions that we are, some of the difficult questions about how the whole business struck together. And I think you've got a lot of potential to grow the catering side and you do need to focus more on that or have a team focusing on that. We weren't able to give Cecilia the investment which she asked for, but we still felt like her work was deserving of some sort of support. The Keezy decided to offer £5,000 of investment for her to start buying some of the equipment she needed for her catering business. We decided the remaining entrepreneurs were not ready for a cash investment from us, but we really wanted to support them in other ways. So we did. We felt Grabberbook could put more thought into their financial projections. We have offered to provide pro bono business services from a top accounting firm in Kenya. This will help them to develop and further grow their business. We thought Youth TV would be more sustainable if they focused on producing content. So we offered to give them mental hours with a UK based production company. This would enable them to improve their production value, thus increasing their revenue streams. We think that the vision of Hip Hop City is awesome. Yeah. But the business plan today kind of didn't stack up or kind of what needs, needs work to, to be done. Yeah. We really caught the vision for the hip-hop city, but we also knew it had a long way to go before it could become anything tangible. The KZ team has personally offered to provide Giuliani with one-on-one -on -one mentorship for the next 12 months. Just being here alone is, is sometimes enough because you can learn a lot. I just have a vision of how it's going to do. I know a little bit about it. If I don't have a hard facts, I need to think more about that. Hey. Africa can only grow as an economy for the next hundreds of years. We have like 800 million people now, and Africa supplies the entire world with natural resources. And so with so much manpower, with new skills coming in, this continent is the next biggest thing. This is where every business person should want to be here. What's happening in this city, in this environment, is uh, big. A glass to new friends, <laughs> to <laughs> business, to children, to Kenya and to Africa. <laughs> right, cheers. <laughs> In a world that's never been richer, it's pretty disgusting that there are children that haven't got a shelter, or haven't got clothes, or haven't got food, or haven't got drink, or are caught in war and are a child soldier. All of those things can be changed, and um, I'm passionate about trying to affect some of those changes. Doing good things is like putting a spotlight in a dark place. When you have empowered one person, it's like you've lighted a candle, and those lights will create a beam of light one day to put the darkness off. It's been amazing being here in Kenya, and we're really looking forward to traveling the rest of the continent to help unlock Africa's potential. Okay.